In this interview, I spoke with Don Tallman. Don Tallman is a Marine and Army vet. He is actively involved with NAMI New York State, as well as the Stride Wounded Warrior Program. In the interview, Don discusses his experiences with mental health difficulties, how he has helped others who experience mental health difficulties, how those looking for help can get involved with Stride and other related veteran programs, and how certain things have helped him in his everyday life, such as his dog Tucker. I very much enjoyed speaking with Don, and I really hope you learned something and also appreciate his passion for helping other veterans. Well, my name is Don Tallman. Um, I was in the military for 20 years, and I got injured in 2008 uh, in Afghanistan. Um, while I was injured, I started volunteering, helping out other uh, wounded veterans um, at the uh, CBWT, which is a community-based transition unit. I was out in Massachusetts. So basically, while I was getting my, my care for my injuries, I was helping others as well. I was a uh, platoon sergeant, um, talking with all the veterans on a daily basis, making phone calls, helping them through their travel plans and doctor appointments, things like that. Um, I, I, when I got injured, I felt like I, uh, I lost, lost a part of myself. Um, I didn't feel as useful as I was because before I used to feel like invincible. Um, I could never get hurt. I can, I was, uh, into, you know, running and very active and very physical. Um, and now I can't do any of that. So, uh, I can't do simple things around the house, like mowing the lawn or, or lifting things or doing the daily functions I used to do. Um, that I never had a problem with and, and would never ask for help. Um, so, during that transition, I, I went into a deep depression, and that's why I wanted to uh, go and help other veterans. I figured if I kept myself busy um, and helped other people that were going similar things, that uh, I would feel better. So, uh, so that's what I ended up doing. Um, when I got done with that and finished my health care and transitioned out of the military, um, I uh, uh, again went into deep depression. I had my my final or my big back surgery, which I couldn't move around for a little bit. And then I basically sat in my basement for almost three years, um, not going anywhere unless I was forced to uh, by my family. And, um, you know, they pushed me to do a lot of things and um, which was good for me, but I just didn't see it. Um, eventually I, I met um, some friends through the Wounded Warrior Project and I started volunteering with them. When I did that, I got out of the house more. I was again helping veterans, and I met my best friend now, which is uh, Jamel Daniels, who was was like a poster boy for the Wounded Warrior Project. Um, he lost his leg in Iraq uh, in 2000, I want to say five, five or six. And um, you know, I met him, and you know, here he's going through his issues, and he is like the happiest, most outgoing person you'd ever see. And I'm just like, man, if this guy can do it, I can do it. So uh, I started pushing myself even more. We started hanging out more, and he got me back into the swing of getting back to my new normal. Um, the Wonder Warrior Project, things didn't really pan out with doing events and stuff like I wanted to. Um, so I met another organization called Stride Wounded Warriors. It's a local group only. They're in West Sand Lake. And I started doing pretty much anything that I wanted to do with the veterans. They gave me like the full reins to do whatever I wanted. Um, our big event, we do skiing, adaptive skiing every year at Jiminy Peak. Um, I started doing um, camping nights, uh, camping weekends. We have our own camp up in Chatham. Um, and actually, that's what I'm doing this weekend. We're doing a big, big event with uh, veterans and their families. So uh, doing those things and being able to uh, take those steps to help other veterans, keeping my mind busy, um, showing people that they can do different things, maybe not the same things, or even the same things differently. Um, so that's, that's like the big, I guess, window of, of how everything happened and, and how I got involved in what I do. So besides your dog, what other things have kind of helped you through your depression and your other mental health related things? Yeah, I mean, the, the big thing was, uh, you know, my wife pushing me, my kids, um, knowing that my kids were seeing me in the state that I was, um, kind of pushed me to, to get out of that state. I would put on that smile and do the best I can to pretend everything was great, um, but it was very exhausting, and I was always tired and always sleeping. Um, but, uh, but I think the big thing was obviously my family, 
Um, and I explained earlier, Jamil, uh, my best friend, uh, he pushed me to do a lot. Um, you know, uh, doing things with other veterans, especially ones that have been through something similar, uh, is the best therapy in my mind, for me at least. And um, when I do these camping events with Stride, that's like one of my best feelings is because you're there, you're sitting by the fire, you might have, you know, hang out with their families and stuff like that and tell your stories and, and see how people are dealing with other things and maybe try something they're, they're trying. But you get, to, you get to know them, you get to know what they're going through, you get to um, see how their families are doing because it's, it's definitely not easy on the families. Um, and, uh, you know, my wife talks to, to some of their wives and she helps them through some of the challenges that we've been through that, you know, she can help them with. So it's, it's kind of like a, a big resource um, put into a camping event. And, and I think it's great because, uh, like I said, you get to share those different resources and how other people are dealing with things, especially if you find out that somebody went through almost something almost exactly as you did. Could you describe more about the camp and kind of what happens there and what you do? Yeah. So the camp, um, it depends. Like this year, we're not going to do as much because, you know, the, the, the whole COVID-19 thing. Um, but basically, we, it used to be a Girl Scout camp. Um, it's up in Chatham, New York. And we have a huge lodge, which during this weekend, the lodge is off limits. But, you know, the lodge has got a full kitchen, bathroom, um, big fireplace. We could do movie nights in there. Um, you know, we got whole bunch of different resources there we have uh frisbee golf i think it's called um we have archery we have paintballs we have hiking um we have you know all the camps are already pre-set up so they're they're tents on platforms some of them have ramps so that um people with wheelchairs can get into the tents and uh you know so the the families don't really have to do much other than show up uh, all the food's provided um I don't usually cook. Uh, once in a while, I'll grill something, but um, hopefully my friend Rob usually comes. He's a great cook. He can cook anything and everything, and he's, he's awesome at it. Um, but s sometimes we'll get one of the other veterans or their family members to volunteer and, and cook for the weekend. But all the food's there. doesn't cost them anything. Um, and like I said, all these resources are there. Um, I'll be certified with archery next month. I'm going to a class so I can uh, be certified to instruct on that. Um, but we have all these different resources there. We have an outside shower um, up at the tent sites. We have two tent sites, and um, they're a little bit further up the road. And, uh, you know, they have the outhouse there. They have a pavilion. We have a bonfire set up up there. So it's, it's one, nice to get up in nature, um, and, and two, have all these different things that you can do during the whole weekend. Oh, and I also do, like, an outside movie night, too. I pick, put up the big screen and, and hook everything up outdoors as well. So... Uh, usually do a family movie and then after the kids go to bed, maybe we'll throw in a, you know, more, more adult version uh, movie for us. That's very cool. So um, how would people find this camp or how would well, we, find we have, have, um, we have a website, stride.org. Um, we have social media, um, you know, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I, all the people that are already registered as a stride wounded warrior, I have in a Facebook group, so I, I, we can talk amongst ourselves and get ideas of what we want to do. Um, but, uh, you know, the Facebook page is probably the easiest one because I can create the events and push the information out. Um, that's where we also do our fundraisers and everything like that. I, I push that out that way as well. Um, but I, I always try, it's usually by word of mouth. Um, but if you keep an eye on social media, it's always out there, you know, Stride Wounded Warriors. Um, if you look it up, uh, all the information's out there. Um, we do a lot of different events. Like I said, our, our skiing at Jiminy Peak, uh, we usually do it in the first weekend of March. Um, I think we're on our 16th year. And um, we do a big formal dinner the Friday night before up in Troy. And it is a huge event. Um, we have a lot of politicians that come out and give each veteran a recognition and, and a flag. And it's like a semi-formal event. Um, and we usually do a uh, auction as well. Uh, that way we can raise some money for this. And, uh, you know, it's a great dinner. But, uh, but that event brings a lot of publicity for us um, because it's, pretty, it's usually pretty well attended. But we push out to all the other veteran organizations, VFWs, DAVs, Marine Corps Leagues, um, things like that. 
Awesome. Really cool. It's going to be very helpful for people who see this. <laughs> um, so can you sort of elaborate on the work that you've done with veterans who have specific mental health diagnoses or maybe things that you've seen? Yeah. Um, again, we, we deal with any veteran that has any type of disability, whether it be physical or mental. Um, you know, I've been diagnosed with severe depression and when I, I, I have no degrees or no knowledge about how to deal with this, I'm definitely no expert. Um, but for me, the only thing that I do as far as helping these guys that have these challenges is act as a um, sounding board basically for them. Um, they can bounce stuff off me. Um, we can talk about what worked for who and, and, and so on. Um, and like I said, my wife has talked to some of the other wives about how she can help them deal with the situations that um, are similar to what we went through. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of different resources out there. Um, about once a year, I send out a list. Um, the list always changes because different programs open up and close down and, and so on and so on, or people change. Um, but I try to update a list every year or so and put it out there saying, hey, you know, this is the, the, the vet center up in Albany and they, they work good with this, or, you know, this doctor at the VA is probably better than this one or, or uh, other type of different resources um, for anything. Awesome. Thank you. So next question. So what kind of improvements or changes have you seen in yourself possibly or in people that you have worked with regarding their mental health? Since we're talking about breakthroughs, you know, change, breakthrough, um, and how did they get there? So any types of treatments, you know, sounding board, talking, listening, like you were saying. So if you could just give an example or two. Second, let me dog, let my dog back in. Say hi. Hello, what's his name? Tucker. 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 Hi, Tucker. <laughs> oh my God, he's so cute. What a good boy. He is. That's awesome. People are going to love that. <laughs> the special appearance of a dog <laughs> okay so yeah so that question about changes improvements yourself or others yeah uh like i said for me um keeping myself busy and getting out of the house was the biggest thing ever and like i said my wife pushed me very hard to do things um but it was exhausting it was hard to put that smiley face on and, and pretend everything was normal and good and and then i get home and then i pass out because i'm exhausted um so you know, I did go to the VA a few times. I went to the vet center for a while um, and, and, you know, did the counseling and everything like that. Um, the big thing was with me was I have surgery after surgery after surgery. I think I just had my 16th surgery two weeks ago. And it's like you get to that level that you're feeling better, you feel great, and then you have to go through another surgery. And then it's like you got to have that rest time again, start, kind of start over. So it's always very frustrating and um, doesn't help with the depression. But, um, you know, having friends, um, especially, you know, veterans uh, that are going through similar things was the best breakthrough I had. Um, you know, I went from being in my, my, my basement, my man cave, which is where we're at now. Um, so it's not a real basement. It's, it's, it's pretty nice. But, uh, <laughs> but um, so, yeah, so, so I went from being in my basement for about three years to, to, getting back to work, helping out more, you know, I'm more involved with my, my VFW, DAV, Marine Corps League. I'm, you know, involved with those things. Um, I do a lot of stuff with Stride. I'm always busy doing stuff with that on the side and all this is volunteer. So on top of my, my full-time job and two kids and a, a wonderful dog, um, I try to try to balance all that. But as long as my mind's keeping busy, I'm doing better. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that whatever works for you. Um, I know, uh, some of my friends have started trying the, uh, the medical marijuana. Um, and that has been in their words, you know, God sent because it, and, and their family as well. They said that everything has changed since then. It's so much better for them. Um, I haven't tried it yet. Um, but, uh, I, I hear it's been working very well for quite a few veterans. Uh, that have the, you know, especially severe PTSD and things like that. Yeah, I think that's about it. Well, cool. thank you. Very mm -hmm. helpful. Um, so you've touched on it already, but maybe in like a summarized couple sentences or something, how has helping others, other veterans helped you 
with your own mental health? Yeah, help, helping other veterans helps me because um, it makes me feel like I have a purpose again. Um, like I said before, I, I, I felt bad that I couldn't do the things that I could do before. And uh, not being able to help out around the house anymore, not be able to run like I used to, not be able to run at all, um, not being able to do all the physical stuff I used to be able to do. Um, I used to be that type of person that no matter how old I was or how old I got, I knew I was going to beat those 18 year olds, you know, in any kind of physical competition, um, which now obviously I can't do. So I, I started doing, um, oh, this is one other thing was uh, uh, hand cycling. Um, so I started doing hand cycling. Um, that's probably the only physical activity that I can do that doesn't cause more pain. Um, so that kind of helps me out as well. But I've gotten other veterans, uh, gave them the resources to get a hand cycle for free um, through an organization called Angel Bites. Um, and again, one of the other resources I used was getting other people's service dogs through a local organization called Operation at Ease. And um, so all these different resources helping them makes me feel better that I have a purpose that I'm doing something, even though it's not physical, but be able to you know, especially seeing somebody like when we go out skiing, um, seeing somebody that didn't think that they can do something, um, be able to get to that point that they love it now, you know, because I mean, that's what happened with me. I mean, I've never skied in my life. And the first time I skied with stride, uh, I sit in a what they call a mono ski. It's a um, like a bucket chair. And it's got a single ski underneath. And uh, well, when I first started, I did a bi ski. It's got the two skis, kind of like training wheels. Um, but uh, I never skied in my life, so I never even thought of it. But uh, so I, I, I tried that and I'm just like, I, I love it. I fell in love with, with skiing that way. Um, I, I do the mono ski now. Uh, I just love flying down that mountain and as fast as I possibly can. Um, and then getting other people that have that same challenge, like my friend Jamel, he was trying to do the uh, one legged ski and he kept on getting frustrated. And I'm like, listen, just if you can't do it and it's frustrating, go ahead and try the bi ski. I was like, it's sitting down. You might not like it. You might, who knows? I was like, but give it a try. It only takes a little while. And again, he fell in love with it. So we go flying down the mountain together. And uh, now it's kind of cool because we can go skiing together. <laughs> so yeah, helping other veterans just, it, it makes me feel like I have a purpose. It keeps me busy. Um, and I like to see other people progress. Um, and get out and try new things that they haven't done before. Awesome. I'm, I've always been a big skier and I can just understand the feeling of going so fast down the mountain. It's one of the greatest feelings. So that's awesome. I used to, I used to ride my motorcycle and um, okay. the last, the last year I rode, I have a uh, neurological damage okay. and I think it's starting to affect my reflexes to my hands. So the last year I rode, um, now I rode for like 16 years, never been in an accident. Then my last year I rode, I wrote, I'd gotten five accidents in one season. Mm -hmm. And then I finally realized, I think I'm done. Uh, so that used to be my stress re relief was, mm -hmm. you know, before I got injured, it was running. Then after I got injured, it was motorcycle riding. So after that, then I, you know, had to struggle to find something else new. And that's why now I got the hand cycling and the skiing. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so yeah, it, just adapting to, to the changes that are coming around. Um, but that's kind of what the skiing's like. I'm sitting in that bucket chair and it's like you're, you're using your body the same way you do when you're going around turns on a motorcycle. Um, so it was kind of neat to, to feel that comparison um, and that speed again. So it was really nice. That's awesome. I love hearing that. <laughs> it's great that you could find something too. Because a lot of yeah. people, what I notice a lot is that there's these resources and programs out there for adaptive sports even. Right since right. we're talking about that but people just don't hear about them so that's kind of like the goal of these videos too is to get not only like you know talk about mental health but also like make people aware that there are these resources out there right yeah one of the other things i, I, yeah. I forgot to mention that i that i do with the stride that i pushed in there was uh i try to do um shows and stuff you know like at the time genius center or spec or whatever and get a group of people to go to them um one of my best people is Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham gives me 30 floor tickets every year and he is phenomenal. So we get a bunch of veterans that come out there and uh, we just watch him laugh. And, and last year uh, we, he did a meet and greet with us. So, you know, he took pictures with us and that's at the top of our Facebook page now is that group picture with Jeff Dunham in the middle. 
Um, but that was another thing I implemented was I was like, just going out and doing an event with other veterans is, is awesome. So I know I'm jumping around here, but all these things are popping in my head as I'm talking. <laughs> yeah. as it's, this it doesn't have to be formal, like I said. Anything that yeah. comes up, you can talk about. That's really cool. Did Jeff Dunham come here? Like, yeah, every, every year. It's uh, usually around February. Um, he, got, he does the Times Union Center every February-ish. That's awesome that you get yeah. tickets to do that. Um, we kind of like went through all the questions, but do you feel like there's anything we missed that you would want to share about, you know, Stride or your own personal experience that could be helpful for viewers? I think just the, the, the biggest thing that I want is to be able to get those, lo especially local resources out there for people. Um, if you don't know what the resources are, or you don't have somebody that tells you about them or gets you to, you know, get you pushed out that door to try these new things, it's, it's, you're stuck in a rut. Um, I was so glad when I found Stride because it had, it forced me to try new things, um, or try the same things differently. Um, so it's, it's really nice. I mean, I, I think that's the best thing is, is all these local, you know, different resources out there for, for veterans in need. Um, I, I really hope that people take advantage of them. So just getting the word out there for Stride, um, Wounded Warriors and the other local um, places as well. Um, I, I think that's like the biggest thing for me is just try to advertise for them and, and get the, the word of mouth going about that. Because every year that's what I try to do is um, I try to get at least 12 new veterans, um, you know, pulled into Stride and we do it with the skiing event. So the skiing event, we try to pull in 12 new veterans every year. Um, that way we can kind of implement them, get their foot in the door and be like, oh, now we have all these other things that you might want to try too. And it, we get them more involved um, and then see them progress. I mean, we've, I've been with the program, I think since 2013. Um, and uh, I mean, there's people that we do the same events every year and, and hang out and see how they progress. So you get to see those transitions of people that stuck with the program um, and that, that keep on doing new things. So um, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is, is just, just trying to say that there's always resources out there, um, whether it be Strider or some other one. I mean, there's, I know the Albany VA has some kind of adaptive sports program. Um, there's a lot of different local ones, so. For someone watching who's a veteran themselves or maybe has a family member who's a veteran who may be struggling physical or mental disabilities, what would be your recommendation for like a first step to take to getting help or finding these resources? For everybody, it's a different first step. Um, for me, and I think probably for most, is just getting them out the door and talking to other veterans that have a similar issue. Um, I have given up my card to so many people um, and, and got them involved with Stride. I and mean, if you just get them out the door to try to, to talk to somebody that's going through something similar. I think that's, like I said, that was the best thing for me. And I think that's a great first step for anybody, um, whether they want to do sports or not. Um, like I said, with Stride, we do, you know, the camping, we do different things, um, you know, public events, things like that. So just getting them out the door to talk to another veteran that's going to something, through something similar, I think is definitely the, a good first step. Awesome. Thank you.